the injury situation, please, as usual, Sean. Yeah, unfortunately, we um, we sort of get to a point where we're getting everyone back and then we, we have a few fallers. The good news, first of all, Barnes is making good progress. He got about 60 minutes um, in a bounce game this week, so that's good. He's not He won't be involved uh, this weekend, but... Um, generally he's making steps so we'll get him another game hopefully next week um, and then we'll look at possible involvement if he if he comes through that of course um, but he's been training with us for a few weeks now so that's good um, Johan's still making progress but he's got he, we can't get rid of these niggly sort of calf injuries he's having so we're having to be a bit more careful with him and, and slow things down a bit Matt Lowen's making good progress um, he's not ready yet but he's making progress and there's good signs on that so that's good news Um the one that's come out from last weekend was Jay Rodriguez just kind of crunched his knee a little bit and slightly twisted it. Uh, luckily and, and fortunately, it's not um, as serious as it could have been, but we have had it checked out and the, the surgeon that's looked after him before is pleased with that and Jay's pleased with that. He seems in good spirits with it. So, uh, you know, it won't be this weekend, but we're hoping it settles down quite quickly and possibly the international break. Obviously, I know we're going to go on to the virus and stuff, but possibly... Um, forgetting about that, that gives you another couple of weeks, you know, without without football that these guys can hopefully um, settle their injuries down and another step forward. You must be delighted then with the fact that when you have called on your strikers to, to come in and do a job, that's exactly what they've done. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, that's that, the, the squad here is important. We don't carry big numbers. Um, it is... I don't want mad numbers, but sometimes we're probably left slightly shorter than we than we probably need to be. But the good side of that is competitive and everyone knows they've got every chance of playing. I like that idea. Um, and when needed, when we've changed the side, either for the needs of change, well, in my opinion, or injuries, etc., then we've we've been strong and we've done well with that. So every member of uh, the playing staff is valid here, you know, and they know that. Um, obviously, we're going to move on to uh, coronavirus and, and possible... <laughs> The distinct possibility now that we might have games either played behind closed doors or the league suspended. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, there's nothing I can do about it, that's for sure. I, I'm, I certainly haven't got the depth of knowledge to be, you know, wondering what they do with these kind of viruses. Um, so there's certainly scientists out there are working hard, I'm sure, of that worldwide, it seems. You know, it seems a collective thing. We can only go and, and prepare like we would do for a game and if it's changed it's called off or if there's other games called off or a period of time that's cancelled then we'll have to we'll have to deal with that as it comes um, it's not ideal of course but it's not you know we know that health is more important than anything so we know that we're aware of that and the players are aware of that there's certainly lots of news about it so everyone's sort of in the picture of what's going on including the players and their families of course uh, Pep Guardiola said to the other day that uh, his preference would be that the league would be suspended rather than games be played behind closed doors because he said, you know, without the fans, the game is nothing. Do you agree with that? Uh, no, I just think that whatever they advise, it will be, I presume, will be done by people who are in a position to advise properly um, the necessaries, the reasons. And I think if them reasons are valid enough, then I'm willing to accept them. You know, there's people in positions who can certainly give an idea on what they think is right and for the right reasons. Um, so it's not for me to decide that, that's for sure. Obviously, the, the, the right reasons, as you say, are, are first and foremost in everybody's thoughts in terms of keeping everybody healthy. But would it be a little bit frustrating for you, if, given the run of form that you've been in, if you were suddenly to have a, a period where... Well, like I say, I mean, look, I know where football is in my life, let alone the grand you know, scheme of life. And if this is deemed a worldwide situation, then football all of a sudden you know, disappears slightly into the distance. But... I think that it's it's one of them things we can't control it. We can't do it. Or currently, we can't control it. We certainly can't control the decisions that are made. We just have to be as professional as we can during this period and go whatever's decided. Um, but the, the health of people is the main thing. We all know that. Um, fingers crossed, if all goes well, then you will be playing Manchester City. Yep. Um, and obviously, uh, they've just had a game cancelled as a result. They'll probably be quite fresh. There's all the uh, uncertainty over whether or not they'll be playing Real Madrid next week. So... Do you feel this might be a, a good time to, to take them on if they're... No, I don't, I don't, think, I don't think that has a bigger effect. I think, you know, they, they've had a game cancelled. They'll, they'll look at that, forgetting about the virus for a second. You know, it allows the players to be slightly fresher. It probably allows them a, a bit more scope for whether they're going to make changes or not make them, as the case may be. Whatever side Man City put out, they're a strong outfit. We all know that. You know, they've had a bit more of a... And a sort of up and down time this season, um, partly not just them, by the way, because of the power of Liverpool and the way they've got about it in the league. Um, but they're still a very, very strong squad. It, it, you know, whatever's going on in the world, um, 
if there's if that doesn't affect the game and we go ahead, then we've got to be prepared for a for a good outfit, very strong at home as well. So we know the stats and the facts, but against that we've been very competitive this season in most most periods. We've had a very strong period ourselves. Um but slightly unfortunate with clutches of injuries, including this little clutch, but generally our focus has been good. So we've got to make sure that we turn up there should the game be played, of course. We've got to make sure we turn up there in good spirits, good shape, but also good mentality to go and take the game on. If you get something against them, that'll take you to their magic 40-point mark or, or maybe more. Um, given the way that things are panning out at the bottom end of the Premier League, though, do you think... 40 points is, is going to be more than enough for, for you to stay up this season? I don't know. I mean, look, you can't guarantee anything until it's done. Uh, my focus is more on us getting more points on the table, us performing as well, if not better, um, us taking on each challenge as it comes. You know, we, we've done well with that. I've been here long enough to, I think, be kind of wise enough with our group and how we work that it keeps us, it keeps us right, it keeps us hungry. We keep focusing on the next game and that's the most important one. Having said that, they are 25 points behind Liverpool City. Have you seen a difference in them this season or is that purely down to how good Liverpool have been, do you think? No, I think, I think, what's, I think because some of the managers are so, so good at their jobs, I think it is, it's just probably in balance. It's good to see as, you know, us managers who are still working, still learning, like everyone is, by the way, but, you know, they've achieved so much, some of these managers, even when they lose good players and, and important players, they've found it tough. And and I think they have lost important players. I personally think Laporte's one of the one of the best centre halves around at the minute, and certainly before his injury, um, and will be again, I'm sure. Um, you know, and that's a big loss. You know, and 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 then you have dips and ups and downs, and lots of games and lots of requirements and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got another team down the road that are playing out their skins. So I think it's just probably a slightly more refreshing twist that even the best of the best, they have trouble. You know, when, when they've got injuries and they've got ups and downs in form, they, they do find it difficult. And I think that's just a refreshing view of what management is because it is very difficult. You know, unless you've got all of your players to hand all of the time, it becomes very difficult. And no one really bothers that much. They just want to see that result come in. So uh, I think that's probably the balance from me looking at them. Um, but that doesn't make them by any means not a top side because they still are a top side with a top manager. Um, so I don't think it makes it easier, but I think that's just a reflection on the outside view of them. And below Liverpool and above you guys, there, would you agree there's been a lot of inconsistency with the teams in and around there this season? Well, it's certainly been more unpredictable than last season, that's for sure. Um, you know, we've taken a couple of big results ourselves against teams that historically have not always gone our way. Um, but there are teams in sort of transitions and for different reasons, change of managers, change of t uh, uh, players, um, transitioning players out, new new sort of players in, and then of course embargoes and stuff like that. It's the first time we've had some of them things happen, um, which equally fair play to Liverpool. If they've used any of that, I don't think they've deliberately meant to, but it's a nice little bonus for them while they've been winning so, so often and with so much prowess that all these other things are going on. I'm sure that's helped them along the way slightly anyway, but they've mainly been very good, simple as that. Aguero's got nine goals in nine games against Burnley in all competitions. Just what makes him so difficult to stop for you? I think he see, uh, see thing, sees things sorry, quickly, you know, in the box particularly. He sees the picture quickly. He sees gaps open up. He sees space open up. And then he is a very, very good finisher. We know that. And, you know, fair play to him. Top player doing what top players do. They turn up and they deliver. And, and he generally does. And, you know... We, we hope he doesn't, but uh, he's got a nice knack of doing it against us. We just hope he doesn't this weekend. Hi, Sean. Just quickly on coronavirus. Has, have you had to do anything? Have you had to amend anything in terms of training or anything like that? Any steps that have been taken? No, only the guidelines that we're given, you know, medically, which is out there really for everyone. Yeah. Common sense, you know, eating well, obviously hydration, they should be given in our environment. Um, hands, clean hands, you know, just good hygiene everywhere. We've, we've let the staff know, the cleaning staff and things around the building to make sure handles are wiped down. So a lot of common sense stuff, really. And then not just in the workplace, taking that home. But there is a lot of information out on that at the minute. So the players should be um, having an understanding of that without us kind of telling them constantly. Everyone's fit and healthy, though. No, no one's gone down with it. Uh, not that we know of. No, everyone's, everyone's good. Everyone's fit and healthy, yeah. Thanks. And just on um, Ashley Barnes, obviously, might be a week, two, three weeks away from, from a first team return. But just how um, how good will it be, hopefully, then to have all four strikers fit again for the first time in what seems like a little while, really? 
Yeah, I mean, it will be. Jay's going to be a little bit, I think. He's certainly not going to be a week. It's going to be a bit longer than that. But but having Barnsley back in the fold or, or getting close is good. Um, yeah, I mean, it, we've been, like I say, we've had sort of little clutches of injuries um, rather than just the odd one over the season. If they're... Not that you can plan it, but if they if they drip in and out during the season, that's normally more manageable. But we've had groups, you know, that have gone down at any one given time. And, and like I said, because we carry quite low numbers, it is tough if you get three or four injuries. It does affect your group. I mean, we're training, you know, roughly lately, the average has been sort of 16, 17 at a push 18 players, when really you want to be training with 20 players, you know, as often as you can. We supplement that with a few of the younger players, of course, but... You know, the club's always got a thirst to make sure they're getting an income on the younger players as well as their development. So they've gone out and they've they've been out there playing. Um, you know, so Mace Goodridge has been around us and Jimmy Dunn and people like this. They've stayed in and around us, Ali Koike and people. So we have had that as well. And we've had to use that. We've had to balance that up against the first team, just even on a training level, um, let alone when we're going to games. And just on City, the record at City for Burnley is is not the best um, in terms of games since you've, you've had a win at City. Um, but... Having said that, we probably said the same thing before Man United as well, and that proved that you can go there and compete against these teams. And, and get well, it's, you know, the facts of the division, there, there's not many sides like ourselves who would have great um, statistical records at grounds like the Etihad, I don't think. Um, so I'm not too bothered about that. The idea of the mentality of going into the game, I always think that's important whether you're home and away, whether you're playing the, the top, middle or bottom. You know, the Premier League, it's tough. Um, statistically, it's tougher at some grounds against some teams, but... You know, we've been competitive and it always gives you... There's no, there's no given. They all know that as well. There's no there's no gimmies in the Premier League. We'll have to earn uh, the right without a doubt because they are a top side. Um, they'll have to earn the right because they know that it's every game is not an easy game. So uh, the, the balance is there for all to see. We just get on with performing and, and want to take the game on because we are in good form at the moment. And just lastly for me, we've spoken in the past about sort of winning differently and you might have far less of the ball on Saturday, for example, than City might, but you've proven you can win games like that. Atletico Madrid did against... Liverpool last night. I guess that shows that there is more than one way to, to skin a cat and win a football match, isn't there? It doesn't mean one's right or wrong, despite what. Well, I've, I've just, you know, my, my balance is to, you know, I like mixed football. I want teams to play effective football. It's not, um, I, I can't remember me judging other teams very often or questioning their styles because we have our own and we, we work on it. We, we want it to be something that is effective in the Premier League. And, and that word effective is key for me. You know, the, the football is many different brands many different viewpoints but at the end of the day you've got to win and, and Atletico found a way last night whatever way you look at it they found a way to get the job done it's not easy going to Liverpool at the minute um, and, and they did a, the right job that was needed to get the win we've had to do that many times we've had to defend we, we will do again by the way we might well have to do this coming weekend defend work hard off the ball work hard with the basics work hard with the shape and then find your moments and and that's an important factor can you find the moments even when you're defending to go and be effective enough to win a game and, and we've had to do that in the past we'll have to do it in the future just because of the nature of the teams you're playing against I know I said finally for me then but <clears throat> just finally definitely Thank definitely you. finally definitely but definitely, definitely but you know but negates the fact that you just said finally so in a second if you say but that means you're going to ask another one um, Ben Gibson still at Middlesbrough situation as it was there or yeah, yeah as far as I know thank you thanks <coughs> Uh, Sean, uh, just harking back to the coronavirus. I mean, this uncertainty, I don't think, is anything we've ever really come across, certainly not in years. I was just wondering, has there been any, have you seen any differences inside like your little bubble this week or, or anything like that? Um, in what respect? Just an anything different at all, really, with, with regard to people talking more about it? or Well, no, everyone talks about it because it's yeah. in the news constantly. So um, everyone was talking about Brexit and now they're talking about coronavirus. That's just because it's constantly... In on you. No, I'm not being flippant about it. It just is. You know, that's the news. So players will be talking about families, you know, people who work at the club, et cetera, et cetera. Then you add in the scientific view from our medical team, which is all the requirements of just being careful and sensible. Um, but no, I only talk like that, only on the periphery, um, you know, and, and mainly still within that, focusing on the fact that we've got a job to do and that's play football matches. And so that isn't creeping into, like the uncertainty isn't creeping into your, to your squad, do you not, do you think? I don't know. I don't really ask them about it. I, I don't. I don't know what uncertainty. But any uncertainty that I have is just to try and beat Man City. I haven't got any other uncertainty. So, but I can't speak for all of them. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Al. You can kill the feed, Al.